All right, today we will look at different ways of um, describing sets and also review relations and functions. So let's look at the uh, different sets of numbers. And we have one, two, three, up to infinity. And these are called the natural numbers. And the symbol is that. If we include 0, 1, 2, 3, then these are called the whole numbers. If we include negative numbers, negative natural numbers, so we have natural numbers, make them negative, include 0, and these are called the integers. If we include fractions, um, if we include terminating decimals and repeating decimals, these are called the rational numbers. And then we have uh, irrational numbers. That's irrational, pi, E. Um, these are numbers that have decimals that don't repeat and don't end. So these are called irrational, and we can use this symbol or this symbol. And then if we include all of these together, those are the real numbers. Okay, and then we have two different ways of um, two different set notations we're going to look at. And we have set builder and interval notation. So set builder notation goes like this. Um, we're going to have all the val all the numbers x such that x is less than negative 13, and x is an element of the real numbers. So remember, you say such that. is an element of. Then we have interval notation and we just look at, um, uh, think of a number line. So if we're at negative 13 on a number line and we want to go from 13 to the left, let's just describe the two ends of that interval. The le right end point is negative 13 the left has no endpoint, so we'll say negative infinity. And then we use either a parentheses or a bracket. Infinities always have a parentheses. Uh, if this was a closed circle, if this was less than or equal to, so if we were allowed to be equal to negative 13, we'd use a bracket here. So if we write it like this, that means include negative 13. This means don't include negative 13. Okay, so right, uh, I'll look at a graph also. Okay, so um, you write this set in set builder and interval notation. Pause the video and try that one. Set builder. 
all, all numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to 10 and x is a real number. Interval notation. Let's look at the graph. If we're at 10, we're going to include 10 and go to the right. So the left endpoint is 10, the right endpoint, there is no endpoint, so we'll say infinity. And with this one, we can be equal to 10, so that means there will be a bracket. Negative 20 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. And try that one. Pause the video. So we have a compound inequality, and we can just copy it for the set builder. Um, we want all the numbers between negative 20 and 5. So that means we're using real numbers. Um, if we look at the graph, it goes from negative 20 to 5. We'll have an open circle at 20, closed circle at 5, everything in between. So that's going to be an in interval notation, negative 20, comma 5. We'll have a parentheses on negative 20, bracket on 5. All right, pause the video and try that one. X such that X is less than or equal to 4, where X is a real number. Um, we're going to go, here's 4, and we have a closed circle because it's equal. And we're going to the left. Also, if you think of this symbol as an alligator eating the bigger number, that's awkward to be able to read this. So just think of it as an arrow. And when it points to the left, it means less than. And when it points to the right, it means greater than. Going to the right, x is going to the right of 10. x is greater than 10. x is going to the left of 4. x is less than 4. So looking here, we have the right endpoint is 4. The left endpoint doesn't exist, and it is negative infinity. We're going to include 4 parentheses on infinity. OK, so all of these had all real numbers. Now when we look at sets like this that don't include all real numbers, in set builder notation, we'll say x such that x is greater than or equal to 2, starting at 2 and going to infinity. But now we have to say what set x is in. And we could just say natural numbers. Um, we can't write this set <coughs> in interval notation because it's not all real numbers. All right, try writing that in set builder notation. <clears throat> Pause the video. x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 7. And x is in, if we said integers, integers, I mean, if we said natural numbers, they start at 1. But we need negative numbers, so we're going to have to say integers. And we can't write it in interval notation. All right, multiples of 3. Um, some of these you have to get a little creative with. And we know we want x such that x is equal to something. And let's look at a table to find a pattern. If we have. Um, let's just let n be natural numbers and see if we can generate the multiples of 3. So the first multiple is 3, and that means we'd have 3 times 1. Here's 3 times 2 would give us 6. These are multiples of 3. 3 times 3. So we see that this is going to 3n, and we just have to say... Um, x equals 3n, 
and n is an integer. I didn't put negatives, but negative numbers are also multiples of 3, negative 3, negative 6, and that would just be achieved if n is an integer. Now we have negative values over here, and it'll give us negative values over there. We can't write it in interval notation. Okay, if we wanted to write that in set builder notation, um, we know we're going to have x such that x equals something. And let's look for a pattern. We need to generate these numbers, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, 2. And then we just look at what do we do to this to get to that. And we could start with whole numbers, and maybe we could have a zero here. Uh, we shouldn't use integers because we only want numbers that are positive, so we use, looks like we use natural numbers. And if we just have one times a half, two times a half, well, that works. Three times a one half, that works. Four times a one half. So we know that <clears throat> we're going to have n times a half, one half n. So we need x such that x equals 1 half n, where n is, um, and we just look at these numbers. These are natural numbers, so we want that. OK. Um, pause the video, try that one, and you can use a table to help you find the expression. So we're not going negative. Why don't we just start with natural numbers and see if we can do it from there. We know we need to have 1.1, 2.1, 3.1. So this, what do we do to this to get to that? We're going to go plus 0.1. What do we do to that? We add 0.1 and we'll get there, 3 plus 0.1. So we see that the expression is n plus 0.1. And we can write the set builder notation as x such that x equals n plus 0.1, where n is a natural number. Okay, relation and function. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. A function is a relation that has no domain value those are the x values with more than one range value all right is each relation a function? All right, so it's helpful to understand 
functions three ways with um, I guess two graphical and, a, and an equation. So let's look at this um, map a graph and equation. Um, the map is where we write out all the x values. We write out the y values, 5, 6, 7. Don't repeat anything. So here we have the domain. Here's the range. And let's see how they are related. Negative 2 goes to 6. Negative 1 goes to 5. 0 goes to 5. 1 goes to 6. 2 goes to 7. So it's OK to have repeated numbers here, because what we're seeing is that each domain value has only one range value. So it is a function. If we look at a graph, we go negative 2, 6, negative 1, 5, 0, 5, 1, 6, 2, 7. And based on this, we don't know if um, there are any points in between, so we'll leave it as points. We won't connect the uh, points. And we use the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line, it only touches the relation once. So we have a point there. Every vertical line touches at most once, so that means it's a function, and that's the vertical line test. We don't know what the equation is for that, so we'll skip that part. All right, let's do this one. What if we have an equation? Uh, we can still, we could make a map, but it's going to be easier just to do a table. We'll do a graph and an equation. All right, um, we can find the, um, we can put it in slope intercept form, or we can just find the intercepts, x and y intercepts, to make the graph, and then we can do the vertical line test. So if x is 0, then y equals 2. If y is 0, x equals 5. And if we do the vertical line test, every vertical line only touches once. So we say that um, relation is a function by the vertical line test. And if we go over here, we want to look at the equation to see if, uh, if the relation is a function. Let's put it in slope-intercept form, negative 2x plus 10, divide by 5, divide by 5. And then we can just look at this. If you put a number there, are you going to get two numbers there? No. So we can tell from the equation that it's a, it's a function. And okay, so is this a function? Um, let's look at a graph <clears throat> and an equation. In the equation, if we get y, if we isolate y by doing a square root. I'll have a positive or negative x plus 1. y, the y value, uh, is two different values, a positive and a negative. So this tells us it's not going to be a function because there's two values there. And if we look at the graph, uh, this is shifted to the left. 
and it's a parabola. Let's go sideways. And here we can see that it fails the vertical line test. So we'd say not a function. It's not a function because of this and also because of the vertical line test. All right, uh, pause the video and uh, see if these are functions. So with this one, um, we look at all of the domain values, but we won't repeat the 70. And then we have 8, 9, 10, domain and range, 40 goes to 8, 50 goes to 9, 60 goes to 10, 70 goes to 10, um, and I guess we can get rid of that one. All right. And if we look at the graph, we're going from 40, 50, 60, 70, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then we're going to go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 40 goes to 8, 50 goes to 9, 60 goes to 10, 70 goes to 10. So this passes the vertical line test. Here we have every domain value has only uh, one range value. Let's look at this one. Oh wow, that may have been confusing. We're going to do that. Okay, and we could graph it. It's hard to graph like this, but let's go ahead and look at the equation. We'll square both sides, divide by 4, and now we have <clears throat> a parabola. And if we graph that, um, we know it's just going to be the right side. Um, this would be both sides of the parabola, but this is saying that we're only using uh, the positive x values. x can't be negative. So if we test this with a vertical line, we see that every vertical line will touch it at most once. And here, if you put a number in here, you always get one y value. So that's a function. This is a function. And The last one, we know that's a parabola, shifted up two, and it passes the vertical line test. If we look at the equation, every time you put a number here, you only get one number there. So that is a function. All right. One more example, and that's using function notation. Evaluate f of t at 4t and evaluate it at 3 minus 2a.
So here we're just going to um, put this in place of all the t's. So f of 4t, I'm going to copy all of this, but wherever there's a t, I'll leave a space. So that'll be 4, and then I'll have 3, So write it out with a space, and then in each space put in the 4t. And now we just simplify 16t plus 1. Here we're going to have 16 times 3, 48t squared, 20t plus 1. And pause the video and try that one. So we write it out with uh, spaces, and then in each space we put 3 minus 2a. Now we just have to simplify. So we'll have 12 minus 8a. And we'll have to remember this is not going to be 9 plus 4a squared. <clears throat> we have to multiply this 3 minus 2a. 3 minus 2a. So 9 minus 6a. Here we get negative 6a and 4a squared. So now we have 3. This is going to be 9 minus 12a plus 4a squared. Then we get 15 minus 10a plus 1. 12 plus 1. And 27 minus 36 plus 12a squared simplify we get negative 8a plus 13 12a to the fourth minus 46a plus 43 and we'll stop there